There are victims uh, that we've spoken to and who have given testimony to us who have been mutilated, gang raped, often by up to a dozen men, if not more. And sometimes relatives were first forced to watch, sometimes children were forced to watch, sometimes children were forced to engage in the rape themselves and even kill. There have been massive violations across the country of the right to food, the right to education, and millions driven from their homes. They started beating my husband, his brother and my father-in-law. They were beating them with the butts of their guns. They all had guns. This happened along a path through the bush as we were fleeing from village to village through the bush paths. As they were beating him, they were shouting, where do you come from, where are you going? They were shouting we should go back. They tied my husband, his brother and my father-in-law down. They also tied me to a tree. They said, here we are going to sleep with you in front of your husband. My ch children were near me when I was tied up and while all this was taking place. The youngest one was crying. I would say there were about 15 Matyang Anur soldiers in total. Out of this number, five of them raped me. My husband, his brother and father were all there while they were raping me. My children also sat on the ground nearby while it was going on. The witness uh, then, according to our report, lost consciousness during the rape. When she came to, her children were beside her crying, but her husband, his brother and father were gone and have not been seen since. We visited uh, not just uh, people across South Sudan, but also refugee camps where one will hear the stories of uh, the horrific journeys that people have had to make in fleeing their towns and villages, but also children, uh, many of them unaccompanied, uh, unable to really find their parents or have much hope of an education. The sort of fundamental recommendation in our report is that the hybrid court, which the government of South Sudan and the AU have agreed to in the 2015 peace agreement should be immediately set up and the prosecutor should start working to build a case against not only those who are directly responsible but those who were in positions of command and who knew what was going on and have failed to prevent or punish it. We will be handing over not just the report uh, to the Human Rights Council but a confidential dossier with the names of those that we think uh, should be investigated by the future prosecutor of this hybrid court. And indeed, the crimes that have been committed are crimes um, under international law and could be prosecuted even in other countries outside of South Sudan if the perpetrators were found there. In terms of the violations that we have researched uh, during the last three months, one of the other factors which I would mention here is that the prevalence of sexual violence against men is higher than we realised when we started our work. But this is ongoing work and I think it would be important that it continues to be done in South Sudan. It's a particularly, it's obviously uh, delicate for women to talk about sexual violence, but it's also very delicate for men to be able to talk about it. So it's underreported and under-researched.